Hello, Finimizers, and welcome to another Finimize Live event. So my name is Retta, uh, your Finimize analyst today, and I'm hosting today's event on AI investing, the next opportunity beyond chat GBT with our partner, Magnify. First, just some housekeeping rules very quickly. So as I said, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us where you're tuning in from and be sure to switch the message to all attendees so that everyone can see your messages. Second of all, the format of today's event is it's going to be a 15 minute conversation with our guest, followed by a 15 minute audience Q&A. And that takes me to my third and final point. Please use the Q&A box to ask a question. And if you see a question that you like, be sure to upvote it so it moves on top and we can get through the most upvoted questions first. So let's kick off. So today, our event partner is Magnify, an AI designed to help you invest. In fact, it's actually the world's first. So with Magnify, you can do faster, better research, get help making decisions, plan for a goal, manage your portfolio, and learn while you invest. Magnify will help you find and buy investments from a marketplace of over 15,000 stocks and funds. And Magnify can even analyze your existing investments that you hold at other brokerages as, as well. So think of Magnify like a co-pilot for your investing, kind of like Siri or Alexa went to an investment school and got an amazing MBA. Today, we're very excited and honored to have Tom Van Horn, Chief Product Officer at Magnify. Tom, it's amazing to have you with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Retta. Very excited to be here on something that's that's everywhere right now in the space. I'm, I'm happy to have the conversation. Absolutely. There, there seems to be, you know, you can try to run away from AI, but there's just nowhere to hide. So uh, this is extremely topical. I'm very excited for this. And let's kind of dive in um, with our first question. So since, you know, I touched on Magnify is the only AI out there doing assisted investing, why does this matter now in today's environment? Yeah, great question. You know, I think if we just turn the clock back a few years ago, access has been democratized. Everybody can participate now. Commission-free trading is out there. But the miss and the gap that's currently in the market is that democratization of the intelligence. And in order to do that to the mass audience, you need to be able to deliver that at scale. Listen, investing is complex. There's so many formulas and jargon, jargon. Even something as simple as Fed, three letters, can mean so many things to somebody when it comes to their investing profile, just as an example. So there's an opportunity in that space to not take over and do things for you, but have a co-pilot alongside an individual investor that they can reference, they can leverage, that can digest all the complex calculations and information and be interactive with them on their own personal financial journey. Amazing. Yeah. And it sounds like the next logical evolution um, with, you know, uh, de de democratizing basically finance for the masses. So, okay. And sort of related to that. So how does AI enable retail investors to have access to more useful data? Yeah, as an example, there, there are a lot of tools out there today, um, but they're professional tools. You almost need a PhD in that particular, and, and some folks on here might have seen them before, the Bloomberg terminals, the Morningstar Advisor workstation products, but it takes a lot of time. When we surveyed our audience uh, in the consumer investing market, really the, the top two frictions were the complexity of the investing space, which was a huge barrier to entry on wanting to be able to participate and feeling comfortable and trusting themselves, and the other was time. And I think most folks that have personal lives where they're raising families or you know, driving to the soccer fields on weekends don't have the time necessarily to do all the research to make an intelligent investing decision. So the real opportunity here is to be able to deliver all of that intelligence and deliver those calculations and those analytics in a very easy to use conversational manner, something you can take out of your pocket. Maybe it's 11 o'clock at night and it's your first chance to kind of take a break and a few things are on your mind about your financial future. Somebody is always there 24-7 to be able to converse with something that knows you, knows your inputs, knows your risk tolerances, to be able to ask questions. What, what did my account do today? Am I still on track to retire? I saw there's something going on with inflation. What does that mean for my accounts? So that being able to translate all of that information in a very easy to understand, removing the complexity, removing the jargon is really the unlock for the masses that want to be involved in investing. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I feel like that's, you know, one thing AI does quite well at the moment, which is, you know, summarizing and synthesizing, you know, lots of information and trying to kind of condense it down. And if I understood correctly, you know, based on what you guys are doing, what your AI, AI is doing, is that it's actually tailoring what it's saying and the recommendations based on, you know, the individual's portfolio, risk tolerance, investment mm -hmm. objectives, and so on. Yeah, I mean, the only way to do this successfully in the investment space is to have a personalized solution. So if depending on the level of business that people do with Magnify today, we might already know things about them if they've gone through financial planning journeys or if they choose to invest directly with Magnify. Maybe they have their investments somewhere else, you know, in a Schwab, Fidelity, Trade, Robinhood style, and they want to put an AI assist on top of that to help them out and help find hidden opportunities, hidden risks that they didn't know were there. A lot of people are also that we're seeing have multiple accounts in multiple places. So being able to bring those all into one spot with inside Magnify and then have the AI assistant on top of that to be able to ask questions and do analysis. I think without bringing something to the table that's going to help that user be more informed and be more intelligent in the decision making process, it's akin to to some extent gambling or just guessing, is this, is this the right time to make a move or is this the right time to get into this particular sector? Something as very simple as that, but how do they easily access all of that intelligence to be able to help guide them with their own personal decisions? Absolutely, yeah, and there's, you know, in the investment world, I truly believe there's no one size fits all approach and things do have to be tailorized and per personalized. Um, so you touched on this and, you know, you mentioned that there are lots of AI tools out there, uh, from ChatGPT to BARD, and th there is a tool for everything, right? From image creation to video creation, you name it. So where does kind of Magnify fit or where are you trying to position Magnify in this, you know, fast changing, expanding AI landscape? Yeah, so this this is super exciting and this is a very popular question. So, so I'm glad we're talking about this. Um, you know, if I, if I took the clock back six months, uh, was anybody using GPT in their nomenclature? Like, did anybody even know that was a thing? And all of a sudden it exploded. I kind of liken this to when, you know, Alexa first landed and everybody was like, this thing's listening to our conversations in our home. And there's all this skepticism around it. And now it's, you know, you're playing Jeopardy at dinner time. You're asking what the weather is in the morning. You're setting alarms while you're cooking meals and those sorts of things. With all of the press around these different language models, and I'll call it large language models, essentially the GPTs of the world, OpenAI, the BARDs, and those sorts of things that you've referenced, all of those tailwinds are great. It, it, it's allowing users to see the value that these tools can provide, uh, being able to distill large amounts of information very, very quickly into something that's digestible uh, and kind of help you in your everyday lives. So I think we see that as a huge positive. But I want to be clear that these large language models are largely going to be commoditized at some point from a platform solution. And really what they do is they take, they take speak, they take text, and they translate that into intent. So it's taking that and saying, what is this person saying or what are they trying to ask? And that clearly will, there'll be winners and there'll be losers and they'll be commoditized. And some folks will be very successful at niche solutions and be creating a plugin on top of these particular platforms to help them along the way in very specific places. But when it comes to magnify, really the magic comes after you identify that intent. And how do you do intent mapping into recognizing the specificity of what the user is asking for? And then being able to go very, very deep within a specific domain. For example, magnify pulls in a massive amount of data today from Morningstar, from FactSet, fiduciary data from Broadridge Financial, uh, real-time market data and news, uh, all company filings, 10Ks, 10Qs and all that, all real-time data coming into the platform. So we leverage things like OpenAI, right? If somebody comes onto the platform and says, what's the Easter Bunny's birthday, you know, from a consumer perspective, I want to be able to provide an answer. It's not necessarily in the financial domain, so I'm not in the business of trying to solve for that. But from an interaction standpoint and an engagement standpoint, those things are important. So I'll ask my friends at OpenAI and tell the user, hey, we don't handle that, but you know, here's what my friends at OpenAI say. But when something matches and matches into the financial domain, that's where Magnify really comes to life. We operate inside of a compliant framework today. We are regulated. We can give advice. 
We have the investment intelligence NIP of all the different types of calculations and what if scenarios built into the platform as if a you know financial advisor was interacting with this person. Um, so I think that is really the differentiator. If I had a box essay and I'd say it's the, the vertical space of financial services and being able to go very, very deep in that domain that gets to actionability. And that's where I think you'll find answers on a lot of pl platforms. But if you want to action that in a compliant framework, great. We went through this journey. You told me all this great stuff about my risk. I now came on the other side with a portfolio. I feel really, really comfortable. Okay. One click, get into it. Start your journey now and have the AI monitor it over time and inform you and watch it for you so you don't have to. So I think that's where we're going to start to see a shift across a lot of different verticals, whether it's the healthcare space, whether it's financial services. But in a nutshell, I don't see companies like the chat GPTs of the world as a threat at all. It's fantastic. The more usage, the better these language models are going to get over time, the faster they're going to learn. But the application of it in financial services is where we really come alive at Magnify. Amazing. Sounds incredible. And kind of related to that, are there sort of any emerging trends or advancements in AI technology that are expected to basically further enhance its applications in the field of investing? You know, I think largely in the technology, things are a lot cheaper and faster, and they're moving at a higher rate of speed continually. I think there's some statistics out there so I'm pulling this from memory, but I want to say when OpenAI first launched the tool, they made something close to an $800 million investment to get there. But if you look at over time, the evolution of technology and the, the power of chips and how fast things are moving in, in the tech space, to retrain those models today, it would be a fraction of the cost, under $10 million, to be able to do the same compute power. So I think all the attraction into the AI space is also accelerating the underlying technology that empowers all of these language models as well. So I think we will only see things get better over time and faster and being able to handle more data. I think a good example of this is OpenAI's usage with mathematical calculations. They don't perform heavy lifting mathematical calculations, they'll reference Wolfram Alpha. So I think that's, that's an example of saying, hey, somebody else out there is doing this really well. Let's embed that capability inside of the framework and we're gonna have a better user experience. And that's exactly how we see the world from financial services. If there is something out there that solves the complete picture through this conversational AI and our users are asking for a specific capability, we can embed that inside of our framework to deliver that to our audience. So the way we look at it is that the consumer is benefiting at the end of the day from the usage of these particular tools. It's a win across the board. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So that's not what we invent the wheel and let's rely on the wheel invented by others. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to your point, you know, these models are only getting more and more advanced as people use them, whether we know it, whether we realize it or we don't, right? We're all helping train open AI and every other kind of AI model out there. Um, my last question before we move to the audience Q&A, and please, if anyone from the audience has a question, feel free to put it in so we can, uh, so Tom can answer it. Uh, but my last question to you, Tom, is what are the potential kind of limitations and risks uh, uh, when you rely on AI too much with, in, with investing? And what can people do to mitigate those risks? Great question. Um... You know, I think the first thing to understand is that there's a lot of players coming into this space right now. There's a lot of buzz around this. There's a lot of investments, a lot of startups coming into this particular space. So I do think that folks need to do their homework uh, beforehand, before they start sharing what might be personal information to them to an app they just downloaded on their phone. It kind of goes without saying these days, everybody should be conscious of that, but when there's such hype around things and, and there's such high engagement, I, I really think folks need to do their homework. Um, and that's why I think, you know, Magnify for an example is, you know, an SEC registered investment advisor. We operate completely within a, a compliant framework when we apply all of these particular tools. Um, and I think that goes a long way in understanding who you're dealing with and who you're sharing information with. That would be number one. Specifically in the investment space, I think what really needs to be double stamped is a solution that, for example, like we provide is it's not a replacement. It's not a replacement to an advisor. Uh, it's not an automated solution where you click and this thing completely takes over. It's a co-pilot. It's along with you. 
you're going down a journey that says, okay, am, am I on track to retire? You provide some inputs. It's giving you some scenario analysis, telling you what your likelihood is of getting there. And then you're saying things like, you know, well, what if I save an extra 300 bucks a month? Okay, what does that do now? What's the confidence putting me in an investment portfolio and me getting to that particular goal I have? Maybe it's buying a house. Maybe it's saving for some big vacation. Maybe it is your retirement. So this, this interaction and this unlock, I think it's understated what a barrier it is for somebody to search out a financial advisor, an actual human being, and then schedule an appointment and then go visit this stranger and sit down and try and get a comfort level where you start sharing all of your personal information to help answer these questions. I think there's something to be said for kind of a little bit like what WebMD has done in, in, in the medical side of things. There's a little bit of a comfort level of, should I worry about this? Where do I really stand? I feel a little bit lost. Let me just pull my phone out of my pocket and just start interacting and getting an understand. And maybe, maybe the pathway is, I also want a financial advisor. But I think that this concept of the risks and the fear about AI taking over, I think, I think it's it's very straightforward from our perspective that these are tools and this is that co-pilot alongside of you. When life events happen, you're interacting with it, you're resetting, you're understanding, it's handling the complexities, it's doing all the heavy lifting for you and you're still in control. You're still guiding your accounts. You're still in control of where things are going, but now you have this tool that's giving you access to all of this information in a very digestible manner. Amazing. Thank you very much, Tom, for that. And <clears throat> with that, we shall move to our audience Q&A. Lots of questions pouring in. So let me get started uh, with our first one. That comes from Patrick, who is asking, how real time is the data that Magnifies AI uses to give uh, personal investment advice? Great question. So uh, when it comes to the market data, it's real time, real time pricing feeds, real time news feeds, any types of the sentiment type of things. You, you can think of as all real time getting streamed in the system. When it comes to the underlying investment data, it is as real time as the industry and the industry players are supplying it. So what I mean by that is we ingest every single night the latest updates from all of our data partners across, I mentioned like FactSet, Morningstar and Broadridge. There are some industry requirements that say, hey, if you're in you're an ETF, you have to provide holdings at least on a quarterly basis. Most of them do it monthly. When there's huge market events like a GameStop, everybody's updating because they want to make sure people understand their holdings dip differences and those sorts of things. So I think the industry is moving towards more real-time transparency, but it's as real-time as the professionals have access to today. Um, and that's one of, the, one of the key things. The reason I mentioned that example is, you know, Magnify not only looks at what individual stocks you own, but it looks at everything down to the underlying companies that are held in whatever vehicles you own, like an ETF or a mutual fund. So hopefully that, that answers that question. Amazing. And a very quick follow-up for me, does it have access to broker research as well? There is some research we've turned on in the platform. Um, so asking for what is the latest on, you know, Tesla, those sorts of things. It is an area I'm, I'm interested actually from, from the Finimize audience too, if there are certain data providers in the research space that they think would be a value add that we should be plugging into. I mean, we're continuing to invest heavily in this tool. We love where this is going. We love the adoption we have and the usage we have to date. That is absolutely, data sources is always something that's on my radar. Um, so if there's anything dropping in the chat, you can come back to me later too, that people think are a real differentiator from there. We're definitely exploring those. Amazing. And our next question comes from Ade. We've, I think, touched on this quite a bit, but maybe just quickly you can clarify, but where does Magnify get its data from? For example, is it plugged into uh, Bloomberg, CapEx, et cetera? Yeah, so the, the main providers today are the Morning Stars, the Fact Sets, uh, Broadridge Financial, real time market data feeds. We pull down from all the government sources. So we ingest all 10Ks, 10Qs, earnings announcements, transcripts. Uh, we have algos that read through all of those as far as understanding what's going on at different companies when you're interacting and asking questions about companies. Um, so anything that's publicly available on that end. Amazing. Thank you. And the next one comes from Kathy, who is basically saying chat GPT is not perfect. How do you manage the risks? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, that is an example, too, I think, of even if folks that use something like a chat GPT three months ago would have a vastly different experience if they used it now. And I think that's part of what excites me about this space is that as the usage goes up, um, 
the success rates of matching to those intents that I talked about. Oh, this person asked this particular question. They really meant this. Those are only getting better over time. So I think in the long pull of things, although things are of very high quality today, I also think that we're in the very beginning stages of this particular journey in understanding these intents through these types of tools and these types of automation. Specifically for Magnify, we have a lot of guardrails and controls around when and how we answer we have concepts like, did you mean, when we come into what we generically internally call a multi-match, meaning, well, did they mean this or did they mean this? And we surface that to the user in a level of transparency. If somebody asks our platform, you know, find me the top performing utilities companies in the last year, and then a few other variables, we'll be transparent and, hey, we're returning these results and they're currently ranked on the following particular variables. So if it's not something the user expects, we want them to be aware of why they're seeing these particular results. And I think that's key. I think surfacing the right transparency as these interactions are happening uh, are what really makes the person trust and comfortable on the other side, because maybe it's not what they were looking for. Maybe they didn't realize when, you know, if somebody just says, find me the best tech funds. Okay, well, we have to make an interpretation on what the word best means. I'm defaulting to three-year cumulative return. If that's not what you wanted, you can certainly ask differently or change that or say, hey, could you look at this on a one-year basis? But I think that is the level of interaction and care it takes in, in a, the financial arena to be able to have that transparency to allow people to, to get to where they want if, if the first response isn't the right answer. That's a great way to move to the next question on you know, how, how it answers uh, basically queries. So Stefan is asking, how exactly does the AI communicate the results to me as a user? Does it simply throw numbers at me or give me summarized text analysis or both? And how easy will it be uh, for me as a financially intermediately knowledgeable user to understand the data thrown at me? Yeah, I think that's our, our biggest challenge is to make sure that results or in the most digestible manner that anybody off the street understands it and it's not overwhelming. At the same time, we have a massive amount of complexity that we support that more sophisticated users want to be able to get to. So there's always chat interaction. If you're going down a, a planning journey, for an example, we're always replaying back to you, hey, as part of these inputs you've provided, you just made this adjustments, here, here's now where you stand. So you don't have to hunt for it and search for it through the history. We try and be very, very conscious of the playbacks. There are ways to click in and double click in and get to more complex research. But we definitely try and be simple out of the gate. From a user experience standpoint, when you if you become a Magnify client, there's a chat window in a drawer you can access at any time and we'll communicate with you in there. The rest of the application has more sophisticated features. On the phone, just like you would expect from a text conversation, that is the real estate we're playing with uh, in an inter interactive manner. You know, one, one of the things I'll just I'll mention on top of that too, because there are a couple of questions talked about answers as well as you know surfacing some of these more complex things. Magnify launched over three and a half years ago to solve something that it's really hard to find investments. So we originally started with our NLP, our natural language processing and our search. That powers a lot of the chat capabilities. Um, we've had over 250 million queries and, and, and search requests come into the platform in that time frame. Um, how do I invest things that aren't kick sectors, things that aren't, you know, something commonly known? How do I invest in Black Lives Matter? You know, find me a bunch of funds that support diversity and those sorts of things. So that natural language component component has built a really strong moat in us doing interpretation analysis over the last few years. And now through this chat experience, it's all about making things deliver in a digestible manner. Okay, and and so there's obviously a chat, and it you know provides output to you in the form of text. But I'm assuming it also can provide data to you, right? Maybe perhaps in the form of tables or a chart or something like that. Absolutely. So you know, people today can actually go to Magnify.com directly and use the search capabilities um, if they just want to try out and just see what kind of data is there, what kind of results you get by just you know doing some different searches on different types of investments, just to kind of kick the tires on that capability specifically. Inside of the chat, if you, you know, ask questions like what's going on with inflation, we'll textually tell you what's going on with inflation, give you a few data points, and then also show you a chart of what's happening with inflation over time. 
we'll give you some prompts on maybe some good suggested next questions. That 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 is um, either that we're guiding folks because we want to make sure they understand they can go deeper in a specific domain. But then it also has a you know a Spotify Netflix algo to it where people like that particular persona are also asking follow up questions like this, so people can go down those journeys. We'll show data in tables. We try and make things one click where we can. So if you get to the end of a portfolio and you want to just one click buy that. Uh, into your order queue, you can certainly do that. So com combination of all of those graphically through tables, through text, um, trying to make the interface as engaging and also digestible as possible. Amazing. And Patrick is back with another good question. Can I teach Magnify's AI to be like me as an investor? So for example, if I want to be ESG conscious, can I you know, basically teach the AI to to do that on, and only suggest companies accordingly. Yes, so personalization is uh, an underlying framework and a module that we put into our particular tool. So over time, as you continue to engage and to continue to use Magnify, it starts to understand your preferences, even as a part of the next suggestion. So. For example, um, you know, I, I've done some searches around electric vehicles and that sort of technology and battery tech and all that type of stuff myself on my own persona. I got a push notification that said, hey, a new uh, EV ETF just launched. Do you want to take a look at it and be able to click and get in that? So we do understand the user. Part of that's also compliance. We are regulated. So we look at every single chat and interaction as something that needs to be preserved so that we have that exchange with that particular user, but we also leverage it in this personalization process. So the ESG example is a good one. If somebody is always going in and looking at ESG and asking about ESG portfolios and say, hey, this is a great portfolio, but could you tilt it more towards stronger ESG scores? Those types of things over time will be something that the machine learns and understands about you know, user, user Tom or you know, those sorts of things. Amazing, and we have time um, for one last one, and I'll condense two questions into one um, uh, that are kind of logistical questions. So basically, the questions are, first of all, how much does it cost to use Magnify? And second of all, is it available in the UK? And maybe related to that, you can just touch on international availability, because our users are tuning in from all over the world. Sure. So I will definitely touch on the first one. I, I have a lot of value in audiences that are very interested, very interested in this space and are highly engaged. So I think anybody that watches this or is online right now automatically checks that box, in my opinion. I want them as a user because really using software like this um, is really what makes it learn and grow over time. So for this particular audience, I think there might be something in the chat or there'll be an email follow up. Um, we're going to make sure that everybody in this audience has access to the tool at 50% off, and that's a lifetime 50% discount as capabilities keep getting embedded and, and, and the, the machines mature over time. Everybody's going to have a great entry point um, from something that's high value today, but also on the ground floor of where this is going. So that will be something that's a followed up on. Right now, it's $14 a month in subscription, um, but again, we're going to do something special uh, for this particular audience. Shifting over to the international piece, we have started to ingest international data across a lot of exchanges. Uh, we currently haven't enabled the AI assistant yet on top of that data. So today the experience is on top of uh, US exchange products, um, but we can do um, insights across other accounts to get hooked up with those particular assets. We're working our way into that, but transparency today our search technology, we've delivered that in some capabilities on top of international data, mostly through Europe, um, but our AI assistant is not something actively working on top of that data quite yet. But outside of accessing international data, but as a user in the UK, or can I use Magnify? Oh, absolutely. Or absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. absolutely. You mean anywhere in the world. Yep. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. That's great stuff. Thank you so much. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today, uh, but hopefully we got through you know, as many questions as possible. Uh, before I wrap up, Tom, is there any way for people to find out more or get in touch with you after this webinar? Yeah, I think we're going to distribute, actually, no, we're going to be distributing something by email to everybody in this audience. So we will be in touch with the, how to take advantage of that, of that discount. Um, people can certainly go to magnify.com today as well. Um, I believe we have a URL set up, magnify.com slash Finimize, so people can get right into that flow if, if they want to go start exploring that uh, before they get an email. Amazing. 
Thank you so much, Tom, for joining us and for that amazing discussion. I hope everyone as well find it, uh, found it as informative as I did. Um, really fascinating to, to, to discuss all this. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you. My pleasure. And please, everyone, if you want to fill out the feedback form that will pop up after this event finishes, that will be great. Otherwise, we shall see you at the next event. Thank you once again, Tom, and have a great afternoon, evening, morning, everyone, and see you next time. Bye-bye.